this Andrew and the Concrete 5 uh, team. We're doing a lunchtime learning series, and we're going to talk about scrapbooks and stacks. So uh, to give a little bit of history, uh, in version 5.3 of Concrete 5, we added a feature called scrapbooks to the system. And what this was was a centralized place to store content and then sort of paste it out into your site, and you could change it all from one interface in the dashboard. And there was also the concept of personal scrapbooks, and these were ways to uh, copy blocks around your site without, uh, so it's just kind of a simple copy and paste. So this is a 5422 site, and uh, you can see if I click on a block, I can copy that block to a scrapbook. I can copy it to a personal scrapbook, which is just a simple place to store blocks that I want to paste around the site. So if I come here, I can paste from that scrapbook. I don't have anything in my personal scrapbook, but in a global scrapbook, there is what we call the site name. So that's the, the name of the site. And then here in the dashboard, we have a scrapbook section, and it lists all of the uh, scrapbooks. There's my personal scrapbook, which I can't do too much with. Um, then there's a global scrapbook, and you can add more. So if I wanted to have a pool of images that I wanted to uh, have a, a header image or something like that, I might call this header images. You add it, and then when you go in here, you can add blocks to it. And then as you do that, if, let's say I add an image. It's not really, but for the purposes of this demo it is. So if I add that content there, and I come back to the home page, I can paste it from my header images scrapbook. And that is pretty much what that's all about. So if I can edit it from the page that it's on, I get a little notice that that's the case. And that's really what scrapbooks were all about. And one of the reasons we did this was because people had a question about how do I change, how do I swap out this, which was just a text field in the dashboard, how do I swap out my site's name with an image? And uh, so before 5.3, we just had a site title that you could change in the dashboard, and that was kind of tedious because you'd have to edit the templates to swap it out with an image. You couldn't do it through the CMS. So what we changed in 5.3 was there was a scrapbook that had that block content in it, and it was called My Site Name. And any block with this name stored in the scrapbook could uh, be placed there. So what we would do then is we can edit this. We could add an image here, and then we might want to size that down, otherwise it'll look crazy. And now this content block, which is called my site name, is going to, if I actually clear my cache, I think. See, we're already getting into some of the reasons why scrapbooks were not the best way of handling this problem. So now you can see throughout the site I've got a logo there and uh, it's an image. And so this was sort of uh, one of the reasons that we did this, uh, just a centralized place to manage content that um, you kind of wanted to repurpose site-wide. So, um, and that was cool. and. People like that, and we saw a bunch of add-ons made that would use scrapbooks for uh, slideshows or grouping bits of content into a tab, um, all kinds of stuff. But the problem with that, and uh, and you could also uh, you could also reference this stuff programmatically. So if we actually take a look at the uh, plain yogurt header, we can see the con the uh, PHP that actually is responsible for showing that block. So here we are getting a block by name, my site name, and then we run a function called display. So that doesn't care what type of block it is, it just it just shows what that block is in that spot. So a lot of CMSs start this way with a kind of centralized content pool that you can then put out into the site. Uh, we, since we did in context editing first, we kind of came at this second, but, uh, but it worked pretty well for what it was. Um, the there were a number of problems with this that we that made it so that we were not happy with uh, scrapbooks as a whole. And uh, the first one was that they were pretty buggy. You could see as I was just changing the stack, 
or uh, the scrapbook uh, for the logo, it took a second to take. That's not by design. That was just the way that the scrapbooks work um, and the way that they were architected kind of lent itself to all kinds of weird little edge cases and cache bugs. So you wouldn't see something update uh, in time. You get access denied errors um, when editing them. Uh, they were just not architected really to uh, um, take full advantage of concrete, and they were not done in a totally uh, extendable way. Um, and uh, again, like when we put these in place, and this is a little bit harder to explain, um, I would say that that scrapbooks were kind of uh, they were sort of limited by previous concrete five decisions. So we had the personal scrapbook before we had the global scrapbook. So this whole, if I go into the sidebar and I copy to scrapbook, if I say admin's personal scrapbook, that's just putting a pointer to this sidebar block in a little table somewhere in, that's bound to my user ID. And the reason you do this is so you could just paste it from the scrapbook. And so now I'm cutting and pasting content around my site which is great and all, but when we built the personal scrapbook, which came about before the global scrapbook, ugh, God, it's already a pain in the butt to talk about. Um, we made it so that when you are pasting content into these areas, we are actually putting a pointer to the original block in this area. Um, so if this block has an ID in our system of 50, what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, we've got a, a pointer to block 50 in the main area on the home page. Now, concrete, this is a little technical, has a limit on, uh, it has a unique constraint on pages, areas, and blocks. So what that means is you can only have, you can't have the same block in the uh, same block ID in the same area on the same page more than once. So if I attempt to paste the sidebar content in there again, it's going to look like it takes, but if I refresh, it didn't actually take. And this was a known bug and something that we didn't think we could actually get around due to the way that concrete was architected. Um, similarly, if you actually attempt to paste the same global scrapbook block in the same area, you're going to get it saying success, but it didn't actually take. Um, you can paste it multiple times on the same page, but only once in any given area. Um, and that was kind of annoying, especially because it looked like it would work. And there were all kinds of blocks in our system. This was a problem we knew we had to fix. There were all kinds of blocks in Concrete 5 that would be useful to paste multiple times. Like people would want to throw like a horizontal rule block or something like that into their scrapbook and then paste it around the content, but you couldn't do that. You'd have to add a new instance of the block. Um, and so that was tedious and it was hard to explain to people and they didn't understand. It was kind of a weird arbitrary distinction. Um, is, that, is that true with the um, actual block content as well or is that just the ID? Just the ID. Just the ID. So there's nothing stopping you from duplicating the content in a content block and pasting it in a new no, I instance. No, I mean, of, um, is the pointer um, pointing it uh, the pointer points at the content. So yeah. If you change the original block, it will change. Yeah, that was another another interesting issue with this. So when uh, with scrapbooks, if you edit the content in here, the goal is to copy out all the changes to each instance of the block on the site. But due to the way Concrete handles version control, um, when you update this block, you are actually creating a new instance of the block with a completely new numeric ID. So then the system has to figure, and so we do a pretty good job of actually copying out the new instances of it, um, but we have to do that. It's, it's kind of a bunch of weird queries that do that because you have to find all instances where we pointed to the old block and then update that pointer's ID to the new ID, and it's just really um, not tremendously... Um, it's not tremendously elegant, and it was ripe for cache bugs because you have to clear out the old block cache. Otherwise, if you sign out, um, you'd see the old copy of the block. These types of weird edge cases were things that we found all the time. So, for example, up until 542, I think, if you did what I just did and then tried to edit the block, you'd get an access denied. Um, like, if I try and edit this block, 
like, you know, you've got multiple copies of the block around the site. It was just really hard to explain to people. Um, we, we tried to make it so that you could edit these things from the front end. Um, and that was a good idea, but just really led to all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. So we wanted to take a step back from that, a step back from referencing the specific block ID and instead referencing a more abstracted concept called this stack, which would hold these blocks. And then whatever state those blocks were in, it would just print out those states. Um, and, uh, and finally, the last thing is, as you probably have uh, gathered with all this talk of personal scrapbooks, global scrapbooks, these things were pretty confusing to explain to people. So when you're pasting from a scrapbook, you see these things, and then you also see admin scrapbook, and you're like, well, what am I looking at here if I'm not looking at admin scrapbook? Like, the distinction between these personal scrapbooks and global scrapbooks was really weird and arbitrary. When you actually go to copy a block to the scrapbook, you see admin's personal scrapbook and global, and if you actually choose a global scrapbook, you get this amazing amazing dialogue right here like which t makes sense if you sit with it for like 10 minutes but basically this this text right here is asking you whether you want to put a new copy of this block in the scrapbook or alias uh, move this block into the scrapbook and put the alias back on the page in its place it is uh i don't remember why we had to put this in I think it was to appease a client at one point, and it was a bad idea. We should have figured out a better way to do that, because this is confusing. Um, basically, the idea is you could take an existing block on a page and turn it into a global block editable through the scrapbook in one step, rather than deleting it, adding it into the scrapbook, and pasting it out. Um, so, And I don't think the... Uh, the time that that saves is not worth the really confusing language and having to explain to people what that even means. Um, so uh, those were that was basically the state of scrapbooks in 5.4.2.2 all the way back to 5.3.0. And uh, we fixed a lot of bugs with it, but I doubt we fixed them all. And there were uh, it really was not as flexible as it could have been. So in 5.5, we decided to rebuild uh, both personal and global scrapbooks from the ground up. And what we ended up with is called uh, the clipboard and stacks. And I will go through the clipboard first. The clipboard is the portion of scrapbooks that is useful for copying and pasting blocks across the site. So instead of add to scrapbook, you can see we've got the copy to clipboard here. And since we're only dealing with copying and pasting around the site, we don't have to throw up some weird interstitial asking which stack you want to copy a block to or anything like that. You just copy it and it tells you immediately that it's been added to your clipboard. And you can paste from the clipboard. You don't have to select anything. This is all just stuff you want to paste around the site. Um, another thing that's cool about this, and I'll get into how we fix this, um, copying to the clipboard, we now no longer have the same limitation of not allowing whoops, not allowing uh, the same block to be pasted multiple times because of the awesome new way that this stuff works. Um, you can paste blocks around your site multiple times in the same area and it does not matter. Um, and so that is, yes? Are those blocks totally separate now? You change one and it does, they're not linked in any way? Um, Let's check it out. No, they are they are changed. Um, if you change this one, you can kind of tell. I mean, there's no way to know specifically. If you can see this, this has a regular red border around it, and these have slightly slightly lighter borders around them. That's meant to tell you that this is an instance of a block that's been copied from elsewhere. If you edit this one, you'll see this block was copied from another location and you can create a new instance of it by saving it. So now if you refresh, this block is still linked to this one, but this one is a completely new copy. Um, and we'll get around how that exactly works in the back end in a moment. Um, so what has repl that replaced the personal scrapbook, and Stacks has replaced the global scrapbook. So this is what Stacks looks like in the dashboard. If you go into a stack, you can see we've got blocks here. And uh, at this point, it feels like a prettier version of scrapbooks. So you can add uh, blocks here. 
know, if I add a form in here, you've got it here. You can move stuff around, and you can approve your changes. And then if you go out to a page that has, whoops, if you go out to a page that has that stack, you can see this is actually a stack, and it shows all of the contents of the stack that it points to. And what's nice about this, um, other than just how quickly it works, is uh, there's a few architectural changes that make a ton of difference um, to this overall experience. So one, um, in the past, uh, in the dashboard of, uh, let me actually, uh, what this, one thing that stacks have, I'll get to why in a second, um, one thing that stacks have that the scrapbooks never had is they have version control. So if I make a change here, you can actually see approve changes comes up. And uh, if I don't approve those changes, um, the stack on the front end of the site will stay showing the contents of whichever one is approved. So, you know, you've got the ability to compare versions just like you can, you know, throughout the site. I didn't make any changes. Um, you know, you've got the ability to roll stuff back. You can approve changes. Um, and then you can delete the stack just the same way you, you always could. Um, that was a big one. People wanted to... Uh, People wanted to know uh, wanted to know why we couldn't do that. If you're in advanced permissions mode, you can change the permissions on a stack. We had the ability to do that to uh, we had the ability to do that to scrapbooks, but it never really worked tremendously well. Um, another limitation on uh, scrapbooks versus stacks. So and this is a little esoteric. So the uh, um, in five three zero a scrapbook was actually a page in the dashboard that contained areas. And any time you made a new scrapbook, you were actually just creating an area on the page. And when you dump blocks in there, it would add blocks into that area. But since there was only one page ever that held blocks, and we do versioning at the page level, you could never have versions for a scrapbook. And then beyond that, since these were all blocks that actually added into the dashboard, the permissions to read those blocks were actually um, they said that no users could actually view them because typically, unless you're an administrator, you can't view stuff that's been added in the dashboard. So we were actually showing blocks to people that the permissions said they couldn't, and we were sidestepping those permissions in certain exciting ways. So you could definitely, you could get into points where, and you can see this on our own site, where even though you're an administrator and you have access to the scrapbooks page, you can't edit some of the blocks in the scrapbooks because some of the permissions have been set really strangely and you have to just log in as the super user. So if you actually check out the sitemap now and show system pages, you can see we have this node called stacks and inside each one is a page and this node is actually outside of the dashboard. Now we do some special we do some special processing to make it so you can't actually visit those pages if you follow that URL directly, they, they get wrapped by the Stacks dashboard page. So there's no way that someone's going to find the side nav page on your site because it's not something you can access directly. But from Concrete's point of view, it's a page outside of the dashboard and you can set permissions on it that aren't dependent on it being inside an area that only administrators can look at. Uh, another nice part about stacks, which I think you've actually seen, um, with global scrapbooks, they were always just one block. They were always based just on one block at a time. So uh, we kind of had a problem where if you wanted to paste out a bunch of blocks from a scrapbook and then you wanted to add a new block to that list and put it in the second location between the first and third, you couldn't do that because these blocks are all independent. You'd have to reorder them on every page that they appeared. Uh, instead, when you actually come to a page with a stack on it, the stack it contains everything. So to add a stack to a page, you just come here, you click Add Stack instead of Add Block, and all of your stacks show up, and they contain all the blocks in the stack. And that means that if you then later decide you want to reorder how those blocks work. You just do that, and you approve your changes, and you come back to the page that's on, 
and now the form is on top of both the, both the blocks. So it made reordering global content something that you could actually do, which you could not do before, um, which was nice. And uh, another cool thing that Stacks lets us do is something called global areas. So for a long time, a limitation I saw in concrete that's kind of frustrating if you play with concrete before 5.5, five, if you install something on your site like the e-commerce add-on, it will add pages in your header, like checkout or cart or whatever. And But then if you actually go to those pages, you wouldn't have a nav across the top. And that's because we had an area on a page that was for the header nav, but the e-commerce add-on didn't add the auto nav block into that area. So it would just, you'd have to add that manually. And that was kind of a pain because um, you know, you may not want to have to go through eight different checkout pages to add your auto nav onto it when the rest of your site already has it. And then beyond that, if someone decides, well, the auto nav is cool, but I want to download the, the Superfish menu, to change that, you would tell them, okay, you have to go into your page defaults and change this block on six pages. And then if you're using e-commerce, you have to swap everything out. Like, it was a real pain. So we decided to, we knew that we really wanted to have the option to add what is called a global area. And if you go into a theme that supports this, you can see in the header of the Greek yogurt theme, we have, instead of just area, we have something called global area. And you give it a name, and then you just call display on it the same way you normally do, except you don't pass a page because you don't care about a page. It's global to the entire site. Um, and what really happens behind the scenes when you do that is it looks like an area on the page, but what we're really doing behind the scenes is we're creating a stack. And it's a special kind of stack that shows up in this global areas part of the stacks interface. And this global area it basically if you add content to here, add block, it'll say this is a global area, content added here will be visible on every page that contains this area. And what you're really doing when you do that is you are actually adding blocks into the stack that is named with the same name as your global area. So you can change stuff right here if you wanted to. Custom template, I want to make this the breadcrumb. And so now, if you do that, you can see, oh, everywhere that I have this, this block, it's now a, it's now a global area, and, or it's now, it's now changed. And even beyond that, you can make your change from the page that it's on, which you can't do with other stacks, because stacks can contain multiple things. But this global area is kind of a special stack that lets you do that. So now that I changed that from the page it's actually on, I actually changed it everywhere. So now what we can do, um, part of one of the most frequently asked questions with uh, with concrete was how do I change this thing over here? And with uh, before five three, the answer was well, open up the template and start coding. Uh, after that, it was go into the scrapbooks and find my site name and make that change. But now all you have to do is say well, just edit it right from the page that you're on and. Uh, Insert the image that you want. Change that appearance down. And then if you publish your edits, oh, sad. It's supposed to work that way. Can I edit this part out of this broadcast? Oh, okay. The clear cache. still have to do it for some reason. Um, so you can still you can make your change actually from the page that it's on. Um, and that was something that we really wanted to get working uh, that we really wanted to get working um, from a user perspective uh, instead of telling them that they have to go to this dashboard that they may never have even visited at this point. Um, and uh, at that point uh, uh, that's pretty much the the differences um, between the two, between the two approaches. Um, uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, for the global, mm -hmm. the global areas, are you still able, like, for some reason, say you wanted to delete the nav on one of your pages, you're still allowed to, right? No. 
yeah. not it's global. Okay. So anything you change in here um, is it's global site wide. So if you wanted to, currently at least, you would have to change that out in the template. So what you could do is you could make a di this only. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why you would ask. No, no, it's a decent, it's a good question. So, since this is glo a global area, if you change it in the template, you've gotten rid of it everywhere. Um, so, what you could do is you could create a page type that didn't include a header with the header nav on it. Yeah. And then you could change your page type through the design that way. And, I mean, a lot of themes... Uh, might not necessarily use the global areas. It, it's kind of a nice starter. Like, I don't know if we would necessarily build our sites to take advantage of that. Um, but in terms of a first time ever editing experience or making it easy to swap out a different menu or a mega menu f instead of the, uh, the auto nav, like it's a, it's a nice first uh, approach for concrete. Yeah, it's Yeah, the trout you could definitely do that. The problem is you would you would lose the content that's in there. But would you retain that global area stack? Would you be able to apply that? Um area? Yeah. Yeah, you might want to change make them name differently. I'm honestly not sure what would happen if uh you had if you changed from global area header nav to area header nav. Um the stack would definitely stay around, so you could come in here and uh, copy out the the nav that you wanted and paste it into the new the new header. But you might get some weird behaviors on this page. And we actually had some we had a bug report that was if you delete one of your global areas, you'd actually have some problems um, if you went back to the page. But at this point. If you come back, the, the header nav is gone, but since this theme still uses global areas, it just instantiates a new stack that is empty now. So that was a, a bug that somebody reported. Can you create a global area from the front end? No, you can create a stack from the front end, though, but the global areas are something you position in the template. Yeah, okay. The global areas. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty much like. I'm just curious yeah. for some weird instances. Like, I don't know. Yeah, you can make it. It's something that we would normally like hard code into a, a custom page. Yep. But this way you can just you, you can still man, make it manageable in the CMS and know that it'll stay consistent. Yeah, so if, like, yeah, what Ryan's saying is, is very true. Like, so if we, if you wanted to give people the ability to change the, uh, the copyright of their site, for example, um, where is this? You might do something like this. I'm in the head, uh, in the footer of the Greek yogurt theme. I'm just pasting in a new global area called copyright. And if I refresh, this copyright's gone. But if I come in here, I can. Say, I don't. You can add this in there, publish it, and now everywhere on my site that I can go to. Shouldn't have deleted the header nav. <laughs> my copyright is there. It's like, God, it's annoying. <laughs> I need that back. The name copyright is like. Already, like, that's a name you guys already had, right? For that area? So, no, I just added it into the template and added content into it. Oh, so you can, like, add, so you, if you're building that theme, you can add whatever name you want. Just like areas, so yeah. So you can add, like, globe areas if you wanted to? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. So I was just curious because I didn't know if that would be, like, a certain name you guys, you know. And, yeah, and, you know, you can do some, 
this kind of combines well with we, we do a lot of stuff where we work with the templates programmatically so we'll say something like if this area contains blocks show those blocks otherwise grab the blocks from the area on the home page so that's kind of the way people have gotten around this before but this makes you have to write less code and uh, you can still use all those same approaches with this one no, nope, they should work the same way as, as uh, other areas. Generally, we'll say you can have spaces, um, but generally we'll say don't, you, you may not want to add a lot of non, uh, you may not want to add a lot of punctuation to areas because they do get thrown into database tables um, as a unique identifier. So be a little careful of them, but you definitely, you can have spaces. You can make them human readable. They don't all have to be like, they don't have to have, underscores or Copyright anything like that. Labels. Yeah, exactly. I'll be right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you were writing a theme, could you do like where you have your uh, in this area down here, like um, could you have a new regular area, like whatever, and then check if that regular area has content in it and then if it does display this pages area and then otherwise display the copyright area. Yeah, you totally could. That was kind of what I was getting at, although you phrased it better than me. So, what you, the only thing I would say is I would, you probably don't want to name them the same. Most likely the silence can be done with CSS on that div. And Correct. Okay, okay. However, there are formatting controls on these guys. So, if you, um, at the block level, so if you want to use our custom design, this oh, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can do something like, I want this to be in times. Um, and that will, um, there are actually some, there might be some, uh, some bugs around this because there's a fair amount of stuff that you have to, uh, have to get working. But now you can see that we are working with the custom design in the stacks at this point. Although I think that was a 550 bug that but someone if you found. Do, if you do that, would it override the original styling? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So those are implied with important? Uh, yeah, there's actually a, uh, um, if you view the source, there's actually a, yeah. Well, they're not important necessarily, but they, they yeah, they, they get loaded up this way. Tabs and stacks is the same true for purple? Um, yeah, I don't know, actually. Let's take a look. So... If I do design on this, and I say, let's align this right. So we've got that. But now I'm actually going to put this on a different page, because I have a feeling that if I don't do that, it's not going to be a proper test. So no, it does not look like it. However, you can, I believe, um, whoops. apply design at the copy block level. So the the uh, design does not, that's right, the design is actually something that is uh, specific to the instance of the block on a given page, not for the uh, not for the, the global, or the block that you copied from the clipboard. Which is an interesting an interesting uh, Behavior, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Right there, um, the piece that you just copied to the clipboard, mm -hmm. um, it had the light right red around it. So now when you alter the first one, it's still going to alter the second one, even though you left Ye editing mode and saved that version? Yes. Be How long does that last? Um, that lasts, that should last forever. So basically, the way that these work is... Uh, when you copy a block um, and paste it with the clipboard, or when you're actually uh, adding a stack into a page, what we're actually doing is this block and the, any stacks that you add to the page, so I'll add it right here so that we can have a discussion that makes sense. Um, both this stack over here and this copied block those are actually instances of two new kinds of blocks on this page. 
that you don't ever interact with directly. But what those blo those are blocks that you could refer to as proxy blocks or something like that. And what they do is they just point to another ID. So in, that's what allows us to get around the limitation of uh, uh, one uh, block ID per area per page. And uh, so, uh, and so when you're actually pasting this block into from the clipboard multiple times, you are adding new co you are adding new instances of blocks that just point to the same ID. So if you change the ID at some point, we just update all the uh, we just update all the um, the clipboard blocks to point to the new ID, and it's a lot easier than what we had to do before. Um, and same with stacks. Stacks are just an instance of another special kind of block that you never see, and they point to a stack ID. And uh, that stack ID is just the ID of these pages, and it just grabs all the blocks from the approved version of the page and prints them out in the page. And if you add a stack, if you add another stack after the first one, you are actually just adding a new copy of a block that points to the same stack ID. Uh, you can have as many as as many as your browser scroll bar will support. So yeah, as you can copy as many to the clipboard as you want. And how do you how do you remove those? Um, they show up in paste from clipboard with a little trash can next to them, and you just click them and they go away. And that doesn't remove them from the site or anything. It's just it just removes them for your little work clipboard area. So this is kind of a broad question, but what are some considerations for like developers that want to have support for both scrapbooks and stacks in their plugin? Or um, you know, you could do a couple things. Since scrapbooks are not installed by default on 5.5, so if you install 5.5 from the from the start, you will have no scrapbook at all. Um, you could, you know, if you wanted to. My first answer is to say maintain like just keep the scrapbook support in the in the old version and keep that there um, because there's no you can't add stacks to the old version and have it work on the, the old system and you can't add scrapbooks to the new version I mean you, you can I guess but uh, um, there's really not there, there's no gracious way of handling that. I guess the, the easiest way is to test for the existence of that page, um, which you can just do via... Um, yeah. So you could you can rely on, on this, and you can say... Uh, nope. So this means that if you actually get into this loop, that you have the scrapbook and you can get the scrapbook blocks. Now there are you probably you come across a helper that works with scrapbooks, and uh, that may have uh, some uh, that m probably has some functions that might be useful for this. The concrete scrapbook helper, and uh, a lot of this is going to be. Um, not useful. Yeah, so this get global scrapbook page is a shortcut for what I just did, but you still have to check to make sure it's both a valid object and doesn't return an object with an error um, because of the way pages work. They will most likely return objects, um, or they could return objects that look like, if you're just, te if you're just checking for objects, you may still not have a valid scrapbook page. Um, for which parts? Uh, probably not forever. Um, it doesn't. It's not too much burden to keep those pointers in there. So we will keep the scrapbook page. We'll probably keep the scrapbook page. I just actually was looking through the core. We have some pages in the core that like are 
uh, like I don't know what could possibly be using them anymore, but we, we've kept them around for many versions. So we'll probably keep the scrapbooks in there for quite some time. Um, at an, another major break, we may, we may remove them. Is a, right now, you got, there's no automatic thing that turns them into stacks. You have to do it. No. You just have to like go to stacks, recreate the blocks, and then reapply them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely, there is a path for doing it, but it's a manual process at this point. Yeah, and it could be automated. The problem was less about automating it, because you could, you could pretty easily automate the actual migration of the data. The problem was more making it so that add-ons that pointed to scrapbooks pointed to stacks instead, because they're probably storing IDs of scrapbooks, and then you'd have to make sure that those IDs got translated into the stacks and carry it all. It, would be, it was kind of a nightmare. So we just decided to keep it over there. But it would not be hard for someone to create um, like a, a script that migrated the actual um, scrapbook copy in, or uh, scrapbook content into stacks. Oh, no, yeah. I was just curious like, if that's how you did it. Yep. Yeah, we figured it was easier to just keep the uh, scrapbooks uh, dashboard option around for a little while longer. Cool. Well, this has been pretty informative. I got to brush up on my templating skills. Um, <laughs> cool. All right. Well, uh, hope that was informative Thank for you guys. You. Yeah, no problem. Thanks.